Hello, the section's entitled Initialize, Initializing Data Systems with Products. Uh, this is the Cloud SQL, and this is part one. So uh, in the previous videos, we were pretty much focused on compute at GCP, and this time we're gonna switch to data. And when it comes to data, it's pretty much, you know, first thing you probably think about typically is databases, and in this case, SQL databases, structured uh, query language databases. They've been around since, I don't know, the 40, 50s or 60s, I, I don't know, long time. So um, not surprising, we'll start with Cloud SQL, which is Google's managed version of, of SQL. And um, so, you know, as a side, of course, you could just choose to run GCE instances and install your own favorite flavor of SQL databases. And then, of course, then you're responsible to you know, manage the OS. Then you have to manage the installation of SQL itself. And then you have to then operate it over time, like perform upgrades, think about backups, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, there's quite a bit of overhead. So here we can actually leverage Google to manage it for us. And they support three products. One is MySQL, which is open source, PostgreSQL, which is also open source, and the SQL Server database. And they only have one version of it. it looks like 2017. So maybe it's like some agreement they had or some weird open source version of SQL, Microsoft SQL Server. Um, I don't know. But in this case, we're going to be using Postgres because it's kind of one of the, well, say easier, but it's probably one of the more common ones used nowadays. Um, terms of cost. Um, oh, features. So in this case, this is about Postgres, right? You pretty much get the entire feature set of Postgres, um, but there are some unsupported things. So you're not, um, you know, because you're not managing the database, you're not actually a super user on it. Um, now you can do most of the things you need to do, create databases and whatnot, but um, you're not super user on the system. And there are you know, specialized things like things that kind of tend to do with running something at the OS level, you're not gonna have access to it. So that's, I think conceptually, you're not a super user and you don't have access to the hardware or the operating system is the main key when you use their managed cloud SQL. Um, in terms of pricing, generally the price looks to be about half, double of what you would pay uh, if you were just running uh, GCE instances with the same number of EP, uh, CPUs. So the price, at least in one region, was four cents, just over four cents per VPCU hour. So, you know, there's not, it's not exactly free, but again, it's not a huge uh, increase in price. Um, I mean, it is double of a price of a GCE instance. But then doing all those other operations would take you a, like a SQL you know, database administrator, which would probably be expensive too, depending on how you want to go. Um, okay, key features. Yeah, what we're going to go through is just some key terms before we go through like actually connecting a database or creating a database and um, connecting to it. So uh, let's go through this. Um, so first of all, when you're using um, Cloud SQL, they basically will spin up virtual machines. Now they're not going to be in your project. They're in Google's project, but there are actual virtual machines running to keep your databases up and running. So those are called Cloud SQL instances. And then of course, each of these Cloud SQL instances have their database, right? So that's what the database instance is um, on that instance, right? Um, there's, there's broadly two options for running Cloud SQL. One is in sort of a non High availability where you basically get an instant a single instance running in a single zone it's cheaper right um, and then there's cloud SQL high availability where they'll run two instances a primary and a backup uh, or standby and they'll run in two different zones and generally the cost is about double to run high availability because there's essentially two instances um, and of course it will do with high availability, you'll have automatic failover. So if a region goes down, not a region, if a zone goes down, the other zone, will, the, the, the standby will pick it up, right? So it's all automated. You don't have to worry about it. Um, 
Now there's some other operations you can do with databases. Um, and we'll go later, we'll go through these more in depth, but you can do things like cloning databases where you make a sort of a separate copy that's completely independent. You can do something that's sort of like copying, but it's called replication. And generally the idea here is you can create Typically, it's done with a read-only copy. So you, you can make a read-only copy of your primary database. And the advantage there is that, is that uh, with a read-only copy, you can direct your reads to the re read replica, and then your writes to your primary, and then you can get a performance boost by having um, read replicas, you know, take offload the read, um, yeah, basically take offload the reads. And I think that's all we're going to talk about as sort of theoretical terms. So let's go back to our documentation. Okay, so there's actually quite a bit of complexity about how you connect your database. So we're going to spend this video and maybe even the entire next one just on your options on how to connect to your database. And it's generally about security. Like how secure do you want to be um, with your database? So broadly, there is a um, couple concepts. One is just the network connectivity, and your two options there are basically public or private IP addresses or internal, external IP addresses. So we'll explore those differences. Then you, once you've got connectivity like at the IP level, then you gotta have some mechanism to allow that connection to go through so this is, they're calling it basically, it's authorizing the connection, right? And there are three generally options around this, or they could be used in combination, but um, one is, the one we'll focus on first is this authorized networks. And we'll talk about um, these other two in a later video. So we're gonna focus on, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do a public IP, which is the least secure, but the simplest to set up in terms of networking. And then just using authorized networks is the simplest way of authorizing the connection, right? And then authenticating, um, well, this is once you're finally connected to the database, it's gonna basically use the native database mechanisms to authenticate, and we'll cover some options around that later too. So we're just gonna go with sort of the, the default root or administrator user. Actually, in this case, it's Postgres, so it's gonna be called Postgres. Um, so we're not going to explore that in depth either. So mostly what we're going to do is we're going to talk about external IPs and then using this authorized network feature to control who has ability to connect to the, um, or which, you know, which machines, for example, might have rights to connect to the database. So the way you would do this is we're going to set up, we're going to get a public IP address for the SQL instance, and then we're going to authorize our public networks. Now just FYI, this, we'll, we'll cover private IPs later, but um, here it says you can't specify a private network for authorized networks, like the 10 addresses. That's because they're already pre-authorized. So we'll see later when we do the private IP addresses. We will not need to mess around with the authorized network feature because private IPs are already authorized. But since we're gonna be using public IPs, we'll need to mess around with this authorization process. And, oh, yeah, so what we'll do is, if you read the docs, we're, later we'll talk about proxy. That's another mechanism to like provide a connection securely. But in this case, we're just using a public IP address. We'll actually end up needing to add our uh, public, or our, we're going to run it from our workstation, and we'll ultimately need to have our public IP address of our workstations uh, being authorized to connect to that database. Okay, I think that's all the talking, and this might make more sense if we go through example. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create the database itself. So if I go to Compute Engine, and uh, not Compute Engine, I think I've already added SQL to my list of popular um, commonly used um, options, right? Um, now, one thing you notice here is, I had to double check this, but uh, you notice I didn't have to authorize or enable the API. That's because for whatever reason, Cloud SQL is one of the ones that are, are whenever you create a project, it is already, the API is already enabled, which it's interesting that Cloud SQL is enabled, but, but uh, VM, you know, 
GCE is not, so whatever. So we create an instance, and we're going to start with Postgres. Those are three options. And I'm going to call this MyDB. Okay, I'm going to give it an initial password. And um, and the key here is it's for the Postgres user. I made the mistake the first time thinking it was root, and so I kept on not logging in right. Um, I'm going to use... You can choose a different version of Postgres. I'm going to use the latest version. Um, I'm basically going to leave everything else to default. So it's going to be a multi-zone. Um, it's cheaper if I did single zone, but I'm going to just stick with the defaults just for the sake of doing it. Um, but I could do single zone. Actually, I'm going to pick single zone because I think it'd probably be faster to spin up too, to be honest. Um, and we're not going to customize anything initially. So we got a single zone. Um, I will show you there is a configuration option here for connections, right? And we're using public IP. So uh, we'll go into other options later. Okay, so basically the only thing I changed was my name, my password, and I think I made it a single zone. Otherwise, I picked all the defaults. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video. It probably takes like five minutes to spin up the database. Okay, we're back. Um, okay, so the database took about five minutes to, to spin up, and we can see our database here. Um, you can see it's got a public IP address, right? And I think that's all we really want to look at from this perspective. So the next thing we want to do is actually connect to it. Now, the first thing we can do is we can log, we can use a gcloud command. Oh, let me pause the video. I just realized I'm logged into the wrong account on my G Cloud. So let me let me log in the right account. So give me uh, go. Oops, go back to pause the video. Okay, now I'm ready. So the first thing I want to do is use the G Cloud command to connect to the database. So I'm going to just copy this and I'm going to paste it. So what this is running is called G Cloud SQL. So there's a series of commands you can run with Cloud SQL. And here I'm connecting to my database, and I'm using the user Postgres. And um, the first thing it's going to do, oh, SQL admin. Okay, so it looks like there's, an, there's a separate set of APIs related to SQL administration that you need to enable if you're going to use this feature. Um, this may take a minute or not. Oh, it's, already up, it's already ready. Okay, so um, what it's going to do now, um, this has to do with that, the, you know, the network, um, this has to do with authorized networks. So right now, we didn't set up any authorized networks so uh, previously, so far. And what that means is that unless you have an authorized network, nobody can make normal SQL connections to your database because there's, no, uh, there's no networks, unless you're on a private IP, which we're connecting through public IPs right now. So... Um, Actually, let me, let me type in my password here. Um, okay, so I'm in, and I can list my databases. Actually, I thought that was list. Is it backslash L? Oh, yeah, it's backslash L. Oops. It's backslash L is list databases, and I can definitely I have access. I can see my databases, right? So the point here is um, that's how you connect. Now, what I was getting after here is that what actually happened uh, here is let's look to see what happened under the hood. There was a business about authorizing networks and if I hit edit here on my database and I go under connections you can see here actually we didn't this was actually done for us automatically so basically this is a time stamped um, see if it has detail yeah actually they don't this, this, okay, so the, behind the scenes, when I did that gcloud connect, it actually went in and created a one of the a, basically an authorized network. And this is my right now with my with my ISP. That's my public IP address, and it allowed that network in. So um, if this entry wasn't here, then I wouldn't be able to connect. So uh, what I can do here, though, I guess I can illustrate. Now I'm going to leave this. 
I'm going to delete. Well, I guess I should delete. Yeah, I'll illustrate this by deleting it. So I hit done. Let me delete this entry. Right. And let me next try to connect uh, this time just using, uh, oh, you know, one thing I didn't mention here too. Um, before you can use this gcloud SQL connect command, you need to have the underlying databases command line tool for connecting to databases already installed in your machine. Um, and so that is actually, here's instructions here. Uh, I just linked in this, you can Google it. This was installing PSQL on Mac, Ubuntu, Debian, and Windows. I did it on, I have a Mac, so I did the Mac version. So you definitely need to have that tool installed before you try to even do the G Cloud version of this. But now that I have that installed, I can actually try to connect to the, the um, database just using PSQL, using a host entry, and then a username. Pretty much very similar to what you did here. But in this case, it should fail because I deleted the, um, I deleted the, um, I keep on getting this term out of my brain, um, authorized network. I, I deleted the author, authorized network entry, so I should fail here. So let me try this first, failing, and then I'll recreate it. So I need to go, let me see, let me save this. And then, okay, I gotta pause the video for this to save. Oof. Okay, let me pause the video. Okay, back. Okay, so now I need the IP address of it. Okay, here's the IP address of this. So I need to go run this command. Let's see if I can get my window open. PSQL, okay. No, I'm running this bottom command down here. So let's see if I can. There we go. I need to run PSQL host that IP address user post grass. And again, I'm expecting this to actually fail because uh, right now I don't have my IP of my machine as an authorized network. And you can see it's not working and I'm, and I'm going I'm to control C it. So to get this to work, um, now I've already forgotten what my IP address is. What IP address? So here's my IP address right here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the database. I'm gonna hit edit. So the other one was a time limited one. So this time I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna actually create a more permanent network. So this is my laptop. And then I'm gonna do this, just an IP address. Right, then done. And I need to save it. And then I probably need to pause the video again. Okay, we're back again. Um, so now I've updated my database with the, um, gosh, I'm just like this term is authorized network, right? So now I have my, my laptop's public IP address enabled as one of the authorized networks. And then I want to just run that command again. So where's my console? So I go to here and I run PSQL host. That's the public IP of the instance and then username. And then it looks like it connected and the password I got to remember. And then I can run my list command. And I can quit, quit. Okay, so that was just an example of the first and probably least secure way of connecting to a database, right? I used a public IP address um, and I just um, authorized a particular IP in. Now, one key thing is that traffic out of the box is not encrypted. So if I was, you know, on a Wi-Fi somewhere or, you know, someone can sniff traffic, right? This is completely unsecure. It's just locked down to this one IP. So this is not the best way of doing this, but it is the first you know, and simplest way of doing it. Okay, so that's it for this video, and we'll continue with other connection methods in the next videos.